Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over Baskin's and Coffin's laws uh, with respect to fatigue, and so without further ado, let's get into it. And so the first thing that you need to know is really this little chart here um, that I've outlined where it just talks about high cycle and low cycle fatigue, and this will help us when thinking about Baskin's and Coffin's law. And so high cycle fatigue is when you're submitting a uh, test specimen or just a regular material to more than 10 to the power 4 cycles, and then low cycle is less than 10 to the power 4, and then high cycle is when Baskin's laws apply, and then low cycle is when Coffin's law applies. And elastic deformation occurs in high cycle, and low cycle plastic deformation occurs. So this is uh, non-permanent and then this is permanent deformation and if you want more info you can watch my other video that I'll be posting about uh, more fatigue related um, information and that'll be on the screen now okay so we know that but um, Baskin's and Coffin's law I should probably write them out for you because that's what you're really here for and so Baskin's law is written as the change in stress where times the number of cycles to failure times a constant b is equal to an on another constant c. And so this is our Baskin's law and then Coffin's law is written as the change in the plastic strain is equal to a constant c over the number of cycles to failure times that same um, constant c, or sorry, these are actually different numbers. These c's are different. And so um, now let's look at a problem. And so we'll pull that up. Okay. And I'll just clear that for us. Okay. And so here's a problem. It says the high cycle fatigue loading data is as follows. Use the data above. Estimate the maximum stress amplitude to ensure 10 to the 8 cycles. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we need to know about this is high cycle fatigue. And so that means that it's going to be this side of the table that's going to apply. So we're going to need to use Baskin's law. And so thinking about that, let's write down Baskin's law, which is the change in stress equals the number of cycles to failure raised to a constant b is equal to c. And then um, usually the way that these things go, where we're trying to find a maximum stress at a number of cycles where we're not given that number of cycles in the data, because, you know, if we were given uh, 10 to the 8 cycles and then a corresponding stress amplitude, we could um, just get the stress range here by... Um, multiplying or dividing by 2. But what we're going to do here is actually um, try to interpolate um, between these two data points in a way. And so that may seem kind of abstract, but I'll just show you the math and I'm sure it will make sense then, or I hope it will. Um, and so here is what we're going to do. So with this um, equation, we need to essentially uh, isolate B and C because we have two data points and then we have two unknowns. And so with those two data points, we can solve for those two unknowns, but we have this B here in the exponent position. So we're going to need to get rid of that and we use logs to get rid of exponents. So if I take the log of both sides, I can write the log of this. Oh, sorry, forgot to write log there log equals log of the constant c, right? And this just all comes from our log rules because if there's an exponent here, we can bring it down um, to our uh, to the front of the log expression there. And then uh, if we're adding them, these can be multiplied. So we're taking the log of this guy and then the log, I'll just erase here of um, C is what we're actually doing in this situation. And then I've just broken it out uh, into this form so that we can isolate for our B. And so we know um, two of the data points that we can use here. So plugging those in, we can say that log 
And remember, this is the stress range here because of the delta, so we're going to need to multiply it by 2 because if you pay attention here, this is the stress amplitude. Um, so 2 times 192 plus B log of 10 to the 6 equals log C. And then log of 2, moving on to the second data point of 167, plus b log 6 times 10 to the 6 equals log c. And these constants are going to be the same in both situations, right? Because it's the same material and it's only subjected to high cycle fatigue. And so we have this system of equations here. So two equations with two unknowns. We can usually solve those. And so if we subtract these two, what we're going to end up getting, and I'll do this in a different color here. Let's try yellow. Um, what we're going to end up getting, and I'll write this minus sign in yellow as well, is um, log of 192 over 167, right? Because when we subtract logs, we can take the inside of the brackets and simply divide it so the twos will cancel. And then 192 over 167. And then this is going to be minus b. And then same type deal here, log of 1 over 6, right? Because these 10 over 6s are going to cancel, so it's just going to be 1 over 6. And then that's going to be equal to 0 because log c is just going to cancel with log c. It's just like subtracting 5 minus 5 or 1 minus 1. And so um, doing all that, I'm just going to make some room here. And then... I'll move this guy up. And so using this guy, what we're going to say here is we have these two logs and then we need to isolate for our B of course. So I'm going to switch to a different color again for fun. And we get B is equal to uh, log of 192 over 167 over log of 1 over 6, right? And so that gives us that our B value is going to be equal to 0 0.077. And of course, you could like write this out as a trailing decimal, but I'm not going to because we're not trying to get a theoretically exact value. We're just trying to get a uh, good estimate here as we specified, right? And so um, that's another thing just to keep in mind when solving these. You're just looking for an estimate if the question has specified that. Okay, so here's our B value. And then what we're going to say is, okay, so we have our B value, but we still need our C value, right? And we can get our C value by just plugging in this B value to our original Baskin's Law equation, which was, of course, the change in stress or the stress range times the number of cycles to failure raised to a constant b is equal to c. And so we know the stress range, we know the number of cycles to failure, we know b, that means we can find c. And so doing that, we're going to do the change in stress is 192 times 2 because its stress amplitude is what we're given there, so we need to multiply it by 2 times the number of cycles to failure, we're using 192, so that's going to be 10 to the power of 6, times 0 0.077. And so that's going to give us our C value, where C is equal to 1,112.57. Okay? And so that's that. So now we have our B and our C values, and so now we're going to need to um, actually estimate the 10 to the power 8 cycles. And so the way that we're going to do that is go back to our good old log change in stress plus B 
log number of cycles to failure equals log C. And we're trying to solve for the uh, stress range that is going to, or sorry, we're trying to solve for the maximum stress amplitude uh, for that number of cycles. But we know that this guy, if we can isolate for it and then multiply it by, or sorry, divide it by two, that will give us our stress amplitude. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and do that here. So plug in some numbers. We know log change in stress, oops, sorry, not equal to, plus 0 0.077 log of 10 to the 8 equals log of that 1,112.57, right? And so if we just move this guy, this guy here over, subtract it from this value, and then raise it to the power um, of 10 because this is log base 10. So that is going to cancel um, this log and just give us a stress amplitude then we will get that the stress range is equal to 269.35 megapascals. And that's mega, right, which is just 10 to the 6. And so that's going to be our stress range, but we need the stress amplitude. And so if we take our stress range, divide it by two, that's going to give us our stress amplitude. And so that leaves us with our stress amplitude equaling 134.67 megapascals. And so we can say that that is our estimate for the maximum stress amplitude to ensure that the material does not fail after 10 to the power 8 cycles. And so that's all that I have for today. If you were confused about this at all, I'd recommend going to check out my other fatigue video, and that'll be up on the screen now again. And so have a great day.